The artistic genius wants to give pleasure. But if he stands on a very high level, there can easily be a lack of others to enjoy it. He offers food, but no one wants it. This sometimes bestows upon him a moving and ludicrous pathos, for fundamentally, he has no right to compel people to enjoy themselves. He sounds his pipe, but no one wants to dance. Can that be tragic? Perhaps it can. After all, he has, as a compensation for this privation, more enjoyment in creating than other people have in any other species of activity. His sufferings are felt to be exaggerated because the sound of his lamentations is louder, his mouth more persuasive, and sometimes his sufferings really are great, but only because his ambition and envy are so great. The genius of knowledge, such as Kepler and Spinoza, is usually not so covetous and does not make such a commotion over his sufferings and privations, which are actually greater. He can be more certain of posterity and divest himself of the present, whereas an artist who does this is always playing a desperate game which must fill him with trepidation. In very rare cases, when the genius of ability and of knowledge is amalgamated with moral genius in the same individual, there is added to the sufferings referred to a species of suffering that one must take to be the most singular exception in the world. An extra and supra-personal sensibility attuned to a nation, to mankind, to a whole culture, to all suffering existence, which acquires its value through its connection with very difficult and remote forms of knowledge. Pity in itself is of little value. But by what standard, on what scales, can we measure whether or not it is genuine? Is it not almost obligatory to mistrust all who speak of possessing sensibilities of this sort? <laughs>